I, I think it's yeah. Diff- I think it's different when you're talking about other people's sex. Yeah, that's that's like totally we're not going to okay. talk about us having sex. How could we? Famously not <laughs> doing it. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to talk about? Brunch. Hit it, boys. Drake meme. Don't cook NyQuil in chicken. Dane cook NyQuil in chicken. That's a good night, huh? Jesus Just Christ. Hop on the Dane train. <laughs> uh, little NyQuil and chicken. I have some pretty strong thoughts on the NyQuil chicken thing. I like it. It's uh, th- Initially, it sounds appetizing. I also knew as no, soon no, as no, that no. story came out. I was like, no one's actually doing this. This is like classic. Why is this trending stuff? Well, I don't. I don't know if that's necessarily true because I do think that children are fucking stupid enough to be like, oh, that's probably a good idea, or some adults probably. They're too. gonna do it now, I think, because now they've heard of it. <laughs> yeah, true. They weren't gonna do it before. There was probably like sixteen people, and again, the, like the the evil minds behind TikTok are just like it is unbelievable how easy it is to do this to americans yeah i know that's the funniest part is that like chinese tiktok is teaching people how to like do valuable that blue productive things and in america the the algorithm just tells us how to kill ourselves yes um but i liked the nyquil chicken thing because i genuinely thought that it was funny the video the original video i thought it was funny i thought it was very clearly like a spoof on awful cooking tiktoks Mm -hmm. and then uh, I also just like the idea of Darwinism. Yeah, yeah. You ever read the uh, the what are they called? I think they're just called like the Darwin Awards. There's like a book of yeah. people who have died in kind of unflattering <laughs> ways. Be a tough, tough uh, hit to make that. Yeah, Terry Kath, the Chicago lead guitarist and singer was I believe the first celebrity to win there there was like a dar they used to do a Darwin award I believe yeah which is like yeah. how did you chunk it the most and he died cleaning his gun uh oh, and yeah, somebody and was like, like hey be careful you've been drinking and he was like well it's not loaded and he shot himself in the head because famously there was one in the chamber mm-hmm. I would chunk that I think I I would always forget I, I I just don't like guns everyone knows this about me same have you I ever would- fired a gun no, okay. and I don't want to. I have. Yeah? How yeah. was it? It was terrible. That's when I decided I was out on guns. It just felt like too much power in my hands. There like was... That, that was the, um, like, the kickback was so strong, it was like a real, like, oh, uh, uh. Yeah, there was a, um, I don't want this to be lightly sexist, but there was definitely a time early in social media where every guy thought that, if they posted themselves like a video of themselves firing a gun, they were a sex symbol and girls would then do the same. And I don't know if it was like a I can hang thing or something because nobody in any of these videos looked like they were having fun. Yeah. Like guys were doing the classic guy thing of just like kind of fake it till you make it thing. But I was like, who there actually wants to be firing a gun? I like the idea. Like I like guns in theory. I think that guns are, like, cool as far as, like... Video games? Video games, yeah, yeah basically. And uh, uh, that's, like, that's where my extent of, like, enjoying guns gets to. And I also, like, I guess, like, the actual, like, mechanical aspect of guns is cool. And the way that you can kind of, like, tweak them and replace parts and stuff. Like, that I feel like is cool. Like, a gunsmith is, like, a cool uh, job. Gunsmith is a cool job. But... I don't know, like, the actual idea of firing a gun was, like, a little bit too, uh, it, it like, just, like, kind of, like, felt like I was a little bit, like, too close to playing God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and hopefully... I feel the same way, honestly. Like, have you ever been in a car where in somebody, like, if you're at, like, a red light or something and somebody drives by you really fast and your car, like, kind of shakes a little bit? Oh, yeah. I, I've done that, and, like, I had, like, the, the same reaction to that like I did with like a gun where it was like I could have just died. Oh my god. I remember I was uh must have been in high school or something. I was driving around with my friends and uh we drove past a bus stop and some kids probably our age were like screwing around at the bus stop and one of them like pushed one like kind of into the street 
And I don't know. They pr- they were probably maybe like still like five feet away from my car. Mm-hmm. But I had like a heart attack at the idea of like suddenly something fucking crazy like that can mm-hmm. happen. And yeah, man. But as far yeah, as far as guns go, and also like if there was an intruder, say you had a gun, and hopefully nobody has had to deal with anything like this, but. Say you heard a noise, mm-hmm. you wake up in the middle of the night, and like you get your gun. Are you actually going to like fire the gun once you see something or somebody? That's horrifying to me. Yeah, I uh, I think if I ever got a gun, I would never have it loaded. I don't even know if I would buy ammunition. I would just use it as an intimidation tactic. Yeah, because it- like once somebody sees a gun, they don't know that it's loaded. Or if it's loaded. And that's like what most people want a gun for. Mm -hmm. Not to actually shoot it or kill somebody. And I have too much anxiety about like firing at the wrong person in the middle of the night. Or wrong person getting their hands on it. Or like not to use like the old Jim Jeffries joke. But like we all get sad. Oh, yeah. I don't want a gun in the house. Oh, honestly, I used to I used to say that all the time. And I've kind of backed off that because i don't know like suicide jokes aren't as funny but seriously like when i was younger i was like i i know i'll never be able to have a gun yeah because that's how i feel if i'm having a bad enough day mm-hmm. and not not that I, I don't really i'm not the type that's that like when i get super down i'm like i don't really do that sort of thing. i don't have those like moments of like super heightened self-loathing usually it's like a, a low and steady slow. trickle yeah. yeah like i i I do. I'll, I'll really let it go throughout the day, but still, I just wouldn't want that. And also, if I had a gun, I would check it. I would develop OCD because I would check the gun every five minutes, even if nobody else had entered the home that day. Yeah, I'd be like, "Did one of the kids get the gun?" And they're like, "What kid? You don't have kids." <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, every single day that I'm alive, the chances of me owning a gun. Uh, grow less and less likely one because like i think that as we get older we all get like a little bit more sad every day yeah uh and like as soon as kids are introduced you do not want a gun in the house yeah have you noticed that though like the look at me i'm cool i'm firing a gun pictures have really kind of fallen by the wayside definitely yeah Yeah. i i do i actually do feel like um like i the probably like the last like five or six times that i've seen somebody post like guns or shooting has been from from women on on like social media. And again, not to stereotype random, but I know the exact picture that is posted when it's a guy firing the gun, and I know the exact picture that is posted when a girl is firing the gun, and both of them in their own way are just like, "Yo, I've got this gun." So yeah, I think I can hang. <laughs> and I see a picture of a guy showing that they can do anything, and I'm like, "You can't hang." No. You stink, dude. Nope. Speaking of which, um, House of House of the Dragon star, Fabian Frankel. I don't watch this show famously. Do you yeah. watch House of the Dragon? I do. How you doing with the dragons? Uh, I'm over the dragons, to be honest over with you. Over the dragons. Yeah, like I was over the dragons when we were in Game of Thrones because the dragons acted as saviors, like the like the break glass to get fucking whatever. What's in the in the in case break. of emergency? Yeah, break glass in case of emergency. That's a good... That's. By the that's way, that's is. you're kind of creating a new emergency. Now you got glass all over <laughs> yeah. the place. Who's going to clean that up? Good call. Um, but yeah, they use the dragons as like break glass in case of emergency too many times in Game of Thrones where it would be like, ooh, they're in a dire situation. How are they going to get out of this one? Dragons? The fucking dragon just shows up and frees them. Well, They've already used that like once or twice already in this show, mm. and the dragons are a lot more prevalent. So uh, that's my that's my big qualm of the Game of Thrones universe. I don't need dragons bailing them out of every bad situation. Well, have you seen this story? House of the Dragon star Fabian Frankel spent seven months planning a singular sex scene. Mm-hmm. I did see that. Uh oh. <laughs> what? I don't know. Like my experience, when you plan a sex scene for seven months, it's not even going to be that good of a scene anyway. So. Is Fabian Frankel putting the pussy on a pedestal? <laughs> One could ask. Uh, oh, I, I'm now I'm looking up who Fabian Frankel is because I didn't know this actor's name. 
He didn't really do anything in this scene, which is hilarious. Not bad then. If it's if you if it's been seven months, try to like involve yourself as little as possible. Maybe that's what you end up having a bit more of a scene that way. Maybe that's what his seven months of prep taught him. It was like, hey, the less you do, the better, pal. If it, exactly, if it's going to be, if you've been planning the scene for seven months, you don't want to be the star of the scene. Mm-mm. You don't want to be the main character of the scene. Uh, is that true? Yeah, because I feel like at that point you're like a cornerback or a defenseman. Like, you just don't want to get noticed. It, yeah, but is it more embarrassing to train for seven months to not get noticed I feel during like, sex? I mean, famously, this was like rule number one of the podcast back in the day. Like, we're not going to be guys sitting around talking shop. But, uh, I, I think it's yeah. Diff- I think it's different when you're talking about other people's sex. Yeah, that's, that's like, totally Like, we're not going to okay. talk about us having sex. How could we? Famously not doing <laughs> it. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to talk about? Um, so what was the, what was your question? Uh, is it is it more embarrassing to train for seven months and chunk the sex, or is it more embarrassing to train for seven months oh, and not even be noticed? If you are training for seven months, the chance that you are going to chunk the sex because theoretically you're not. I don't know. I guess if you're training for a fight, you're maybe doing a little fighting in that time. Mm-hmm. So it depends. When I think this guy trained seven months for sex, I think of it as like a 40-year-old virgin type of thing where they're like, all right, let's go on 100 dates before we have sex where they're not having sex in that time. So if he's just like off the you-know-what the whole time, then I imagine that first time back, not going to be his – best no. scene yeah and i think that we all know that when it comes to sex like the more you think about it the worse it's gonna be oh yeah like you can definitely get in your own head and uh if you're training for seven months especially what if he's on ssris s- as well that's true we've all been there you're on an ssri and then you don't even need to be in your head you just need to be near your head and Guess what's gonna? Guess what's making the blooper reel? Get this guy away guess from guns scene, and sex. Guess what scene is not going in the final <laughs> cut? Yeah, I think that this guy training for seven months probably set him up for more failure than just fucking winging it. Totally. But like, the more I think about it, training for seven months for sex. Also, don't wing it in sex. Find somebody that you love. That's like a disclaimer. <laughs> yes. Uh, I do want to make fun of this guy for training seven months for sex, but like the more I think about it, like everybody's entire life is always just training for sex. It's sad, but that that's something that I feel like I don't know. Like I don't know if it points to people's lives. They think that they're above it or whatever. And again, like everybody's fucking situation is different. So I don't like. I, I was watching Lolo Lolo Jones. Yeah. Oh yeah. She was on uh, one of the talk shows. Yeah. One of those talk shows. I forgot the name of it. I just like watch that talk show now. I saw a Michelle Branch interview. She was on it. Now I'm getting recommended all these clips from this talk show. So now I'm watching Lolo Jones clips. And she is, uh, she's, I think, 40 years old and uh, is celibate, is, uh, has not had sex before. And we're just like a talking virgin? about, yes. And yeah, I don't know, but I just didn't want to say like she's a 40 year old virgin because it sounds derogatory and like who, who cares. But yeah, man, she's been given a real hard time about that. Yeah, I mean, the people, I'm like, it's, she's people, made a choice. You people fingers. really do fucking like latch onto that when they find out that somebody is an adult virgin, and it's and it's like it's interesting. It's yeah. like it's interesting to pick that person's brain, yeah, and be like, like, does this not affect you? Like, it affects like most of the rest of us, where yeah. it's always on our mind, or like it's something that you know. When you, especially when you're a teenager, you're like, I need to have sex. It yeah. sounds cool. Uh, but I'm, I'm sure there's like a point where you kind of like push past. I don't know. the. Oh, yeah. But this... like the weird the weirdness that w- in which people like attach themselves to like virgins is weird. Like Tim Tebow, Lola Jones, mm-hmm. um, the uh, I forget the actress's name from Insecure, but like she uh, was yeah. a virgin. Uh, Yvonne Orgy. OK. Orgy. I believe, yeah. That's an ironic last name. Yeah, I gotta say. Um, but like, yeah, like people like are, people become obsessed with that shit, and it's like all they ask about. Yeah, well, that's because I mean, part part of it is like, obviously, uh, sex is something that is commonly on the human mind. But I think that at some point, and it's it's probably born from like teenage obsession with sex. That at some point, sex and 
I always noticed this with marriage when I was in my like early twenties. When you were married, so, famously. yeah. Somehow, those things end up becoming like conflated with uh, accomplishment. So I think that people look at like Lolo Jones or Tim Tebow or whatever, and they're like, "All right, well, I can make fun of that person because like they haven't done the deed." And I'm like, "Yo, you sound like you are." 12 years old i also think that there's like a little bit of envy involved because like when people look at team tim tebow and they're like d1 athlete superstar like pretty good looking ripped like that guy could be having sex with whoever he wanted and he's just choosing not to and people kind of i feel that people think the same way about like lolo jones and that the actress where they're like they're good looking women they're accomplished like they could be having sex pretty easily and like they're bums that are like i have to try so hard blah blah, blah. And like they wish they could be that person and the, that person is declining the opportunity to have a lot of sex yeah i mean the, the, the second i've said this forever the second anybody starts talking like that is like you're kind of telling on yourself more than for anything sure but else. that definitely exists i think that's part of it oh yeah 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 um i felt so bad though she said that uh they brought up that chris Evans had posted something saying like I am 41 years old and I am like the search is on I am looking for my partner I want to settle down and all of the comments were like oh my god like I found my partner I know that you're going to find yours like Chris you are so brave you're so strong I believe in you or whatever and Lolo Jones is like I said that shit a bunch of times and everybody's like you're washed you're old you don't even give it up what's your problem blah blah, blah. I was like ah shit man yeah I will say though like think about when you like first started having sex and how bad you were at sex imagine getting that Imagine, like, putting on the training wheels at, like, 40-something years old. Uh, yeah. That's a tough place to be. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm just such a I'm, a... I'm a big believer in uh, in just, like, chemistry and not necessarily well, yeah, finding 100%. the one and, like, finding the right people. But uh, 100%. to any younger listeners or whatever, like, you're going to... You're going to have... Good experiences, trial and error. <laughs> people who are good with you, and then like you're going to have less good experiences than, and like it's n- nothing's going to be the fucking like American Pie, like comically ridiculous, whatever. Hopefully not. I don't know. Yeah, and if it is, who fucking cares? Like it's only one other person there. Unless they're a dick, they're not going to really tell anybody. Or unless you're like you're unless you're getting real crazy. Unless uh, you no, unless it, like it is American Pie and you're broadcasting it to <laughs> Blink One Eighty Two, I believe. <laughs> I don't remember. I don't know. I just don't like shit like that. Just like doesn't matter. Just fucking like live and be nice to people. You're going to find people who are good for you. You're going to find people who are less good for you. And I don't like the idea that we're giving out sex advice. But that's that's (laughs) the thing. Like that's not even sex advice. And I'm I'm never going to give out fucking sex advice. But like that that's that's a bit of advice that I just gave to somebody about something completely different. Of like you're just going to different people and different act and different interactions are going to be different and everyone's a fucking person so i don't know just be nice to lolo jones Uh, i'm getting almost all this information by the way that we're doing for the podcast from uh the right and oh okay when i say the right i don't mean politically i mean Uh, the the right side of twitter (laughs) you got your chicken and nyquil thing that's your house of dragons thing margot robbie is uh mortified by the leaked barbie photos you know this which ones the pictures from you know the pictures of her and Ryan Gosling? Roller skating? Just like roller skating and stuff. She was mortified that those got out there. And uh, I'm confused by that because Same. I'm like, yo, it just looks like you're playing Barbie. And right. It's like they're just set they, photos. Exa- it's exactly what we thought they would look like. <laughs> yeah. So How, I don't really know what the problem is. Like, I understand if it's like... Mortified is almost exclusively used when somebody has like a sex tape leaked right, going or like say, nudes leaked or something were, like that. Who is... Uh, Jennifer Lawrence, she was like, yo, I sent my boyfriend a picture of me naked, and now the world sees it. Yes, that is the that correct use of being mortified. Be mortified. Yeah. But I don't know. You just kind of look like you were doing a movie. Yeah. You're great at it, so. I think you can say, like, you're frustrated yeah. that those pictures leaked, but to say that you're mortified, 
that's that's I think that's a little um, a little extreme. Speaking of extreme, Margot Robbie being a, a little bit dramatic there. You know, famously, she's an actor. Uh, you know who's always on the right on Twitter? We just got to get this guy off the right for many reasons. Who? Every time it says Kyle Rittenhouse's name. Oh, I don't. I don't ever. See, I, well, I don't ever look at the right. I, I don't ever click on it. Sometimes I'll click on it on, on like Rittenhouse and just be like, "Did he fucking murder somebody again?" And it'll just be like, "Kyle Rittenhouse gave a speech about." Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, "Why is this news?" Well, I guess like it's news because he's like out and about doing stuff. Yeah, true. Giving speeches. <laughs> yeah. But other than that. Get that guy off my right. Yeah, I mean, I think what that gives we, you the I right? think that we just have to get to the point of acceptance where, like, he's going to live in that world and he's probably going to do stuff, and we probably should stop paying attention on to the him. right or like on the... he, like on the trail. He's yeah. gonna be on the trail. Uh, you know who's also always on the right from what I've seen. Who? Uh, every time I don't often check out the right, but when I do check out the right, uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene. Yeah, she frequently ends up on, on the right, right. a lot. <laughs> yes, uh, Tom Hardy's on the right right now. We got oh, some what did he do? What's 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 up with Tom Hardy? Uh, Tom Hardy surprise enters martial arts competition and wins gold. Quote: He lived up to his Bane character. That's for sure. Who do you think gave that quote? Martial artist, maybe. I would guess that um, somebody that was in attendance. Did you see the? Um... Also, that's kind of wild because. Uh, I guess Bane does do some martial arts, but like Tom Hardy was in a UFC movie. Yeah, that's true. He was in Warrior, which in which he played a UFC fighter. Yeah, that would be more accurate to say he lived up to his Warrior character. Did you see the video of Eli Manning? I did going undercover. I did. Didn't laugh once. Uh, I didn't really laugh once, but I did laugh at. Um, and I chuckled in my head at like the way that he looked. Yeah, I just liked <laughs> yeah. the way that he looked. Yeah, nothing that he did or said was actually him saying that his mom was his uh, coach and his teacher. Yeah, and then the bad guy teacher. Said, the guy saying, "Did you get good grades?" He said, "No, bad teacher. <laughs> good, yeah. co- good coach though." Like that, that was funny. That was okay. There is something though where like all you need to all a, uh, an ex athlete needs to do is anything, and it gets big laughs. You're you're peeking at that uh, copy I gave you. A grande iced apple. C O Mac, Apple. It's a what's it called? What's the uh, what's the big word at Starbucks? It's a uh, caramel. It's it's a macchiato. Oh, caramel. What's the what's the O stand for? Oat milk. Caramel oat oat milk macchiato, blonde espresso. Which I gotta ask, as somebody who's kind of laying off the dairy. I guess I'm answering my own question. You know who's not laying off the dairy? Who? The Toronto Maple Leafs. Oh, famously just slapping milk on themselves. <laughs> it's a. Pr- it's honestly, that's a pretty cool jersey ad. I think that's about as cool as it's going to get. It just says milk in like a pretty cool uh, font, and it matches the, the team colors. I just thought of such a good idea that I'm going to write down okay. in, on my uh, Vontae Mac no matter what thing <laughs> and tell you after because it's something that we're going to do. Uh, but uh, yeah, this is a uh, this is a little app. Oh, wait, uh, the the oat milk thing. What's the point of oat milk? It's still hella carbs. It's a it's just dairy, not dairy. Su- dairy substitute. Yeah, That's the point of it. Actually, so I can't really do almond milk because famously allergic to almonds. Oat milk is almonds? the only kind of like fake milk thing I can do. I just wish that there were. Is there a milk that is not dairy, not nut, and not just a bunch of carbs? What's silk? Silk, I believe, is soy. Oh. I think you could do that. Yeah. Well, how how did soy milk fall out of favor? They really got lapped. Uh, yeah, I think that they kind of were just like soy we're milk still is, here. Soy milk is the Skype of. Uh, <laughs> True. A milk substitute. True. Where True. It was Skype the only one absolutely anybody, cocked. Yeah, it was the it only one. It didn't do anything wrong. Anyone had heard of. Yeah. And then suddenly there became this boom and everyone just way surpassed it. And Skype never fucked up. Not re- I mean, it just like generally didn't work, but whatever. That was part of its charm. I thought that Skype usually worked pretty well. I had to look at this because like it has a weird smell. Like every time I keep bringing it up to my face, I get like a weird whiff. 
and I don't know what it is. Ga- I mean, there's... but it does taste good. It just smells a little bit funky. When I uh, ordered it, I was banging out a quick little office hours, so I got two of these. I got these two fancy drinks, and then went and sat down at a desk and or a table and opened up my laptop, and I was aware that to them. Maybe I was just a really weird guy and was like, could I have two fancy drinks? I'm going to drink them both. Instead of just one huge fancy drink, this is my... Two different ones? No, I got to two of the exact same oh, ones. Oh, okay. I'm going to down these one by one. You know what else I'm going to down? Responsibly. Mm-hmm. Vizzy Hard Seltzer. Of course. I have been on a Vizzy kick, let me tell you. With football season here, fantasy football in particular... I will sit down and I will crack me a nice Vizzy hard seltzer. You know I, I could have used a Vizzy hard seltzer this, seltzer this week in fantasy football because I had the worst bad beat of all time. You did. You just barely got edged out. But, man, as we trade the old for the new, it becomes fall. And as I famously said to my therapist this year or yesterday, this, year. <laughs> this is like my time of year. Okay. Not that fall is my time of year, but summer being over is my time of year. I just feel a lot better. We're back to wearing pants. I like that a lot. I never really feel too comfortable in shorts unless I'm doing really, really short shorts. But That's interesting. Yeah. Let's get into that later. like to let it all out. But summer's phased out. It's time for something fresh during the season of change. While you make the transition, grab a case of Vizzy Hard Seltzer with flavors for every vibe. Whether you're cozying up for cuffing season or hosting a tailgate, that will get the envy of the lot past the vibe check with a case of bold, delicious, Vizzy hard seltzer. We've talked a little bit about Vizzy Mimosa, Mm -hmm. and I'm not going to talk too much about it. Just kidding. I am. It's so great. It's light. It's refreshing. It's one of my favorite overall Vizzies. So it's a good time of year for that. comes in strawberry orange, pineapple orange, peach orange, and pomegranate orange. And if you like to shake things up or keep your options open, try a Vizzy variety pack for a cornucopia of flavors. Everybody knows that's a fall term. You got variety it's pack corn. one with Copia. strawberry kiwi, blueberry palm, black cherry L, pineapple mango, variety pack two, gets you watermelon, strawberry, raspberry, tangerine, papaya, passion fruit. That's a really good one. And blackberry lemon. Vizzy hard seltzer. Fall flavors for every vibe. You can stock up on Vizzy Hard Seltzer and show some love for the show. Here's how to get yours. You go to VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash washed to find Vizzy near you. That's VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash washed. And to hear about the latest flavor drops and more, sign up at VizzyHardSeltzer.com slash subscribe. You must be 21. Celebrate or older. Resp- or older. Celebrate responsibly. Molson Coors Beverage Company, Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. We got to go to Wisconsin. I do want to go to Wisconsin. I abso- I actually do. You can see where the sausage gets made. That's right. And also where the Vizzy gets made. Mm-hmm. Did you ever watch Laverne and Shirley? Uh, no. It's a light oversight on your part. I'm not going to shame you for that because there's just such a small chance that you would have watched Laverne and Shirley. Mm-hmm. Difference between you and me? I did watch Laverne and Shirley. Yeah, it sounds It's right. open, has them, they, they make beer. That's okay. their job. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. It's kind of like just a great show. And you got Lenny and Squiggy. Michael McKean is uh, that's uh, Chuck. Oh, okay. Yeah. And he's fantastic. Okay. Well, you you would like Lenny and Squiggy. We're honestly, we're probably like the Lenny and Squiggy of Washed. Okay. Where Laverne and Shirley are doing stuff. They're figuring out how to do their thing. And then Lenny and Squiggy come in. They are the, like the clearest precursor to Kramer. Okay. I love just describing, just explaining Laverne and Shirley to you. But yeah, we could go to Wisconsin and do. There's no hockey team in Wisconsin. No, there should be. It's an oversight. Well, there's the Badgers. The Badgers are a pretty big deal. Man, Wisconsin is so. Is very much in my life in like a lot of small ways, and I've never been to Wisconsin. Yeah, no, I agree. Uh, And I, I, I feel like everybody that I've come across that has a Wisconsin tie. I've enjoyed like so I think that I would really like the people and like the community in Wisconsin Uh, our guy Stan is from Wisconsin ah that's true and uh yeah I mean he he speaks very highly of Wisconsin the only thing that I don't like about Wisconsin is Aaron Rodgers 
I go back and forth on Aaron Rodgers. I like that he exists. Yeah, I don't particularly care for him. <laughs> He's just, I mean, with I say this very respectfully. I can be this sometimes. He's a penis. I, I was going to say he's a bitch. Uh, I think he's more of a penis. He's a, just like a, a real penis out there. Yeah. All right. He's a real bitch. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, <laughs> what else you got? We watched Oh wait, Bef- 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 Fletch. Yeah, we did watch that, but I want to talk. Uh, part of that read made me uh, want to bring up this question. Do you, like, understand cuffing season? Never have, never will. Yeah, me neither. I really don't get it. I know what it means. It's like when the fall rolls around and summer's in the rear view. It's like that's when you want to like Shack link up. up with a partner and get you through like the cold, cold months or something. But like I've never viewed fall and winter as like need to have a girlfriend or boyfriend right now. Yeah, I don't get that. Maybe it's because you don't you're not out and about and like super as social as you are during the summer. But, like, you can still go out and meet people. Yeah. I always had a weird relationship with, like, the <laughs> like the kind of social calendar of, like, all right, this time of year you're supposed to do this. This time of year you're supposed to do this. And I'm like, are you aware? I'm trying to survive. <laughs> I'm trying to still be alive by the time the next season comes out. Famously, you have, like, reverse season- seasonal depression. So my therapist thought she came up with that yesterday, and really? I was like, oh, that is adorable. You definitely don't <laughs> listen to my podcast. But, yeah, I'm I'm starting to get to the point where – and this happened uh, last year, and, like, last fall, obviously, was, like, a – last fall into winter into everything was just, like – there was, like, a lot of – obviously, like, a lot of shit that uh, happened. But just, like, the fact that it wasn't summer for whatever reason – Helped my kind of day to day. Just like, and again, maybe it's just like we're doing pants. The yeah. shorts are gone. Yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I just feel like the, uh, sometimes it, when it's fall or winter or something, like, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm always inside. I rarely go outside. Yeah. And sometimes in the summer, you have to feel bad about that. Mm-hmm. When it's, when it's not, when it's nice outside and you're staying inside all day, you got to feel bad about it. You're like, fuck, all right, I'm, I'm burning these summer days or whatever. I'm, by social standards, yeah. supposed to be outside. Uh, and then it gets, like, real hot inside if you don't have AC and shit. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. But, like, in terms of cuffing season, I feel like it's better to have a partner in the summer because that's when you are doing shit. And I like to do yeah. stuff with, like, a partner. Oh, yeah. Have, like, a partner in crime. Whereas, like, during the fall and winter, I am very cool just, like, hanging on the couch doing my own thing alone. Oh, yeah. I'm very cool just, like, watching football, watching hockey, whatever. Maybe it's because hockey's around that I can just, like, constantly keep myself busy. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I've never subscribed to cuffing season. I'll give one last romantic musing here. I, like, one of the great parts, one of the great things about a partner is the chaperone aspect of it, where they're you're doing things together, but also, like, if they weren't there, you probably wouldn't be doing that thing. So. Yeah. Any time of year, that's good to have. But it's funny. You said something that my therapist brought up, which was the kind of pressure that you put on yourself in summer of like, should I be doing things right now? Mm -hmm. Should I be going somewhere? Should I be doing whatever? And you still do a lot of stuff in the summer. Like This wasn't the most eventful summer for me, but still did a lot of things. Like You look back on it and you're like, yeah, I did all these things. But I don't know. When summer ends, you can think, oh, I didn't do enough. Fourth of July... For whatever reason, I always feel like summer is over and that I didn't accomplish enough, which is <laughs> weird. And it just shows like a real misunderstanding <laughs> on my part. But yeah, man, this is the time of year that I just naturally feel a little better, even if things don't change. So hopefully if anybody has seasonal depression or whatever, maybe kind of look at it from that standpoint. We're back in jeans. If anybody's got any light to moderate body image issues like yours truly i just always feel better this time of year with like how i look i I just feel nicer so hopefully anybody else has that because yeah the summer can summer is an active time but it's just generally not when i'm uh, feeling my uh my hottest okay let's talk about confess fletch it's a movie directed by 
Greg Matola, who I like, wrote this. He did. Um, he worked a lot on Undeclared, but he was also a big player in Arrested Development, and that the way this movie plays should not be a surprise to anybody who's seen Arrested Development. It's a very quirky number. Mm -hmm. It's the third installment of the Fletch series, and I can promise you. Neither of us have seen either of the Definitely first two. Definitely not. Right? Chevy Chase, I know, was the star of the f the first two. Yeah, maybe for a Patreon thing, we'll watch another one. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I was just like, oh well, I'm not even going to look that up and look into that. Uh, this I had never even heard of it before. I don't into think this. that I had either. I don't think that I had either. Fletch is his name is I M Fletcher. He is an eccentric former journalist. He used to be a journalist of some repute. Mm -hmm. That's what he. Tells everybody, a journalist of some and repute. he is accused of a murder. He is the chief suspect in a murder. There is art theft in this movie. There is Lorenza Izzo in this movie. It's got a great cast. It features just a great rapport between Roy Wood Jr. and John Hamm. Mm -hmm. This might be one of John Hamm's, if not John Hamm's, best movie performance. He was awesome. He was great in this movie, and friend of the podcast, John Feidelberg, has voiced this a couple of times. It feels like this has kind of flown under the radar. You're not finding it this in movie? too many theaters. Yeah, This movie is like the most under the radar a movie has ever been. Not much publicizing. No. Publicity. I, I don't, Miramax is in charge of this one, I believe. I don't know if they're like the... They're the studio, so like I'm assuming that they're in charge of like distribution mm -hmm. and and uh, marketing and stuff. Absolute chunk job of the century because I saw one trailer for this movie and it came from somebody on Twitter that was like, "Hell yeah, I'm very excited to see this." That's the only only exposure I had to this movie and and finding out about it. And then uh, Sepinwall posted his review of this movie, and his thing was like, why is why is Miramax or whoever not fucking promoting this movie? Because I highly, highly enjoyed it. Same. So I, I – this is one of my favorite types of movies in that it is a perfect B. Mm -hmm. You know? It's not an A+. plus. It's not an A-. minus. There's – it's very, very, very quirky, and John Hamm's character is essentially – I watched it and I was like, this guy is like if one of if either of us and this is gonna sound douchey, like if either of us lacked self awareness. Like just or had no self awareness or had no it was like a, a Larry David version of like a white podcaster. <laughs> he's got a little comment for everything, but he's just letting it fly for everything, despite the fact that the stakes are very high and dude, you are the chief suspect in a murder? Yeah, at he some point you got to drop it. He, he has just never like does. he has the air of like uh, of like it's like the air of white privilege, knowing that he's just gonna get away with like everything. Not get away, but like in the end, he's gonna be okay. Yeah, yeah. he's he, he's fantastic though. And again, the, the rapport between he and uh, Roy Wood Jr., who is the chief detective, is excellent. investigator. Yeah, and oh no, inspector. Inspector. They keep using the word inspector. <laughs> inspector. I mean, I would take those two in some sort of spinoff or some new TV show. I don't know. I feel like John Hamm's in a million Apple TV commercials. Why I don't mean, you make a show with those two? I would absolutely love to see the Fletch universe continued with John Hamm. Yo, like, he, right? He's like an adult Pee Wee Herman. Just yeah. put him in a bunch of different situations. He, right, exactly. It could apply to a million different scenarios, and it's like already an IP, so... John, I, I would love John Hamm to just like become Fletch. Give us the yes, make him. I mean, he's he's not synonymous with any other character to my knowledge. No, so no, <laughs> no, never definitely not. Did any famous character that anybody knows about? I actually did watch a I watched a brief uh, clip of him on Howard Stern, and Howard Stern asked him if he like resented Brian Cranston because he kind of always took everything from him mm -hmm. uh, all those years, and he was like, dude. Brian Cranston and I were like the same guy. We were the we're like we were grinding and we were hustling and doing like bit roles and he was being the guy on Seinfeld or whatever and then like Malcolm in the Middle is like this big break for him and everything. And then at the same time AMC was like we're going to try to be the new HBO. 
let's get these two jamokes and gave us both like the opportunity the of a lifetime opportunity of a lifetime so it was actually kind of cool i'd never really thought about their and he, he said that they are like very very good friends because they've had very very similar arcs uh, arcs yeah i yeah dude i would love if they continued the fletch universe keep doing it. i thought that lorenza Izzo was awesome in this movie i was a little mad at friend and creative engine of the show spike because the the spike law of who did it came into play spoilers can we spoil it uh no i wouldn't spoil all it. right well there, there's an actor in this movie and as soon as this actor popped up i was like oh damn it spike he did it mm -hmm. yeah <laughs> did you think that no i uh i wasn't quite sure um there's a there's a little bit of misdirection in this movie, definitely, definitely. and, uh, and I kind of bought into it. A lot of um, options. I'm still kind of adjusting my brain to subscribe to the spike, the spike theory. Um, but that is, by the way, that if a certain actor is in something, and somebody did it, they likely did it. Yeah, I mean, there was a this was a big Mad Men reunion. Even I, John knew that. Slattery. Yeah, yeah, and so uh, he plays a good. Uh, he played. He played a good editor. Yeah, plays a good editor. Play, this movie famously takes place in Boston, and he plays a good Bostonian. What took us so long? <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Um, there was a th there was a scene in the uh, in the kitchen of the neighbor's house yes. that was fucking hysterical. I was dying. I was dying the entire time, and it was probably like a ten minute scene, and it just ca it was like the fastest punching like comedy routine that i have seen in a long time and it was just fucking like joke like it was all physical comedy basically yeah. and it was like joke after joke after joke after joke and they all delivered they were all so fucking good and whoever the actress was in that scene playing the neighbor was fucking hilarious too like there was there are a lot of like very funny scenes and very funny like quips in this movie it is you mentioned it being like the perfect B. I think that that is very true because this is a movie that like most people are really going to enjoy, but you're not going to have any annoying conversations about it. You're not going to have like nobody's going to be like, oh, this is the best movie of the year. No like takeaway. no grand takes or takeaways like everybody's just going to agree that this is a very good movie and they're just going to leave it at that. I'm glad that you mentioned the pace of it because the pace of it did was kind of reminiscent of another John Hamm uh, vehicle, which is 30 Rock, in that it was like if a cartoon were live action, where like every few seconds there's something for you. Yeah. And that was my favorite thing about 30 Rock, that even they, like you were never not getting a joke. And that's what this movie does. There's always, even if it's just like a kind of throwaway line, there's always something. It's like written into the character, like yeah. the, the, like Fletch's reactions to things or like his responses to things. That is the joke, like yeah. a lot of the time. Um, there's also like it's there's no patting themselves on the back with that kind of pace. Like they don't let the jokes. I don't want to say they don't let the jokes breathe, but they don't like they don't like w pause for applause. Yeah, yeah. They know that it's funny, and they just move on to the next funny thing. I really like it, and let this be a strong recommendation for you to see it, because I feel like you're not going to find many others. And that's not to say, like, we found this diamond in the rough. It's a freaking John Hamm movie, but really just undersold and underpromoted. So hopefully everybody gets to go and see it, because it's a lot of fun. Did you watch it in the theater? No, did you? I did not. I uh, On YouTube, you can either rent it for $20 or... Or buy it for twenty five dollars, and Dude. I bought it, and ah. I'm glad that I bought it. I, I would it. definitely rewatch this movie. Yeah, I'm kind of mad. I was like, I've never even heard of this movie, so how good can it be? Mm -hmm. And about really the first scene, I was like, Oh man, I'm gonna like this character a lot. I think that the when weighing the options, I was like, What's what do I have potential to be more mad about? Renting it for twenty dollars. Or uh, we're ending it for twenty dollars if it's bad, or being mad about not buying it for five dollars more if it's good. And I decided that I was just willing to uh, spend the extra five dollars. Yeah, and now I mean it, that's it's like a comedy version of something of like 
Juliet Naked, where it's like a nice, not actually no. I think Juliet Naked is great. Um, it is great. It's but it's something that you don't always need to think about or put too much thought into. It's light, but you can always kind of go back to it. It's light. You need to throw something on. Huge recommendation on it. Shout out John Ham. Hopefully, he finally gets the uh, the Emmy for this. Yeah, hopefully. What's uh, what's what's uh, your grade on Letterboxd? Oh, we shoot. got a log on Letterboxd. All right, uh, I haven't done it either, but I'm I'm doing uh, just a straight four. That's exactly what I'm doing. It's a, it's a, it's a hard earned figure. It's a mm-hmm. hard earned four. We forgot to promote the Patreon this episode, by the way. Patreon.com slash Listen to Brunch. Also. Anybody, if you want to head to Boston people, if you want to head to where some of the things in this movie were shot uh, around Boston, Idle Hands on Thursday, I'm going to be playing music with a friend of the podcast, Dave Lefkin. We are going to play two hours worth of Ween, which as I've sat down to make sure I know how to play two hours worth of Ween songs... Two hours is a long time. Definitely don't have two hours worth of material. So you might be hearing some very we jammy. Jam ver- very jammy. Dude, I already have the meme made. That's like, uh, I am the, I'm going to create something so chaotic or whatever. Like, yeah. I am going to open up a 35 minute boys club jam. I love that idea. Uh, I will be there and uh, I'm very excited to see you turn ween into a jam band. Um, But yes, do go to idle hands uh, Thursday. What? Six thirty six thirty. And I do like the idea, though, of starting a uh, like only in Boston confess Fletch tour. Just doing like a tour of yes. the sites for a movie that like m- probably most people have not even heard of. Go by just like any brownstone. Yeah, be like this looks like it could have been one of the places where they stand outside and talk to each other. They're always doing that. <laughs> and then there's just like the the Boston police headquarters. Yeah, like mo- half the movies here. Yeah. Last uh, confess Fletch note: more Lorenza Izzo. Love Lorenza Izzo. Terrified of Knock Knock, as we've covered, but great in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Great in this. I thought her chemistry with John Hamm was fantastic, so more of that. Talk to you all later. Bye-bye.